Hey everyone, Joe here. In today's On One Photo Raw tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create your own stunning black and white HDR cityscapes. Now this here is a photo I took of Marina Bay Sands in Singapore. And I'm going to show you how you can combine three photos to help you create this one. So let's hop in here and get started. Okay everyone, as you can see you have the photo right here that I had already edited I just showed you. And right here I have my three bracketed images. Let's click on the control button, then click on each one of these individually. As you can see, we have all these selected. Now we want to go over here to the side and click on HDR. Okay, now we're going to bring up the HDR creation window here. As we can see, we have HDR look, toner. We don't have to worry about those too much right now, as we can edit those later. But we do want to focus on this is deghosting, medium, choose your middle image, and the default look, I'm actually going to set mine set to just plain natural. And we want to align, have that, make sure that's checked, and open in develop. Once we've got those chosen, go ahead and click save. And now on one photo raw, we'll combine these images so we have a photo uh, that we can edit from. Okay, wonderful. Now our photo's been combined and it opened up in the develop module for us. So we can go ahead and start editing. But before we get uh, too started too far into this, there are a few things I want to go add in the effects. First, let's go over here. We have our HDR look. We'll come back to that one later. I do want to add the black and white filter. I think it's important we go ahead and set the tone for our uh, image here. Get it? Set the tone. Okay. I'm a bad at jokes. Anyway. <laughs> let's click on toner first and go down where it says toner say type it says none go ahead and let's choose selenium one now you can choose any of these you want selenium one is just one i actually like the best i'm gonna go ahead and click on that one now we want to go back up and we want to do some uh, color adjustments here now right now it says everything's set to zero but all these lights and stuff are actually can be controlled as you can see, just moving the yellow alone brightens and uh, darkens the lights. So I actually want to pull each one of these, uh, the red, yellow, and green, all up to 20. And that will help brighten up the lights a little bit better, which really help make our image glow in later edit. Okay, once we got that done, let's go back over here to develop. Okay, it's a little dark. Yes, we've noticed that. Now, let's bump ours up one third to stop. Now, I just manually dialed in 0 .3, uh, 0.3. You can use a slider if you want, but it's sometimes easier when you want to file in like something that, that accurate, but just manually dial it in the, end of the keypads. Now, let's get our highlights here. We're well, gonna pull those up also to help brighten those lights up to 60, if I can get it there. The mids, I'm also gonna brighten up here to 60. And the shadows, 60? No, <laughs> I'm not brightening the shadows up 60. Let's just pull the shadows here just a little bit to 12. And we see that kind of even out the lighting on our image here just a little bit. But don't worry, we're going to be working on this. Temperature here. Uh, I'm actually going to cool mine down just a little bit. The sky was a little warm. Now you're probably thinking, well, this really isn't important. It's black and white. It does help with the image look here a little bit. As you can see, I dialed 4200. And it does, in fact, change the look of the image a little bit here. And if I dial this one in, say 30, which is what I want for my tent, as you can see, it does change the sky. And that's something to keep uh, keep in mind when you're editing black and whites. The color temperature still does uh, take an important role in getting a good quality image, uh, you know, look from your photo and everything. All righty. Let's go down here. Details. I'm just going to click on low. That's fine. Do want to make sure our lens corrections is working. As you can see here, mine has the Sigma. I have the 17 to 70 uh, DC micro contemporary lens. That's the lens I used on my Canon 70D when I originally took this image. Okay, don't have to worry about anything else. Let's just go back over to the effects module. Okay, great. Now we've already got the black and white done. Let's click hide here to kind of minimize that. Now we want to go down here to HDR look. And we are going to do some adjustments. Now I want to pull up the compression a little bit here. It's about 138. Yeah, that's where I had it before. 
details. If I bump that a little bit up, it's, it's already at 20, but default, when you choose natural, I want to pull it to 25. It's a minor bit. And I do want to pull up the glow here to 35. And let's see here, get it on up to 35. Yeah, now you can see that looking pretty decent here. And we can turn that off and on, you can see the difference. You may prefer it without the HDR look. You might prefer it with it. You know, it's completely up to your choice. I think for the details and stuff, it adds to black and whites. I do like it quite a bit though. Now our last filter here, yeah, this is a quick edit, is it gonna be the vignette, of course. Go ahead and choose that one. Let's squeeze on the sub door here. Now I do wanna pull up my feather to 100 though. And I do actually want to click on the little cog over here and do a little configuration. You know, a little change the configuration, like the blending options and what to apply it to. Particularly, I want to only apply the vignette to the shadows. Once we get that shadow, uh, click on apply to to the shadows here. We do want to adjust the range here to about 60 as well. As we see, we can turn it on and off. It's only affecting the shadows and not the lights. Therefore, it kind of gives us a good contrasty look on our black and white photo. And I really do like that. And that is it, folks. So in case you want to see a little before and after, and there's what the preview looks like before we did our editing. And here's what it looks like after. Okay, everyone. Well, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, how about give me a thumbs up? Thumbs up is always highly appreciated. And if you're not a subscriber to my channel, go ahead and take the time to subscribe. Subscribing is free, it's for you, and let you know when I release more videos. And if you're interested in On One Photo Raw, do check out the links down in the description below.